ward. And right now we're doing the history of third ward. Because when blacks first got freed from the Emancipation Proclamation in 1865, they could not move out here to third ward. No. When they were living in fourth ward, they had to move out and migrated to fifth ward. Blacks was moving in fifth ward in 1865, five years before blacks moved out here to third ward. And right here is when blacks moved out in third ward in 1870. And right here is where blacks were staying all up and down this street Dowling right now. Blacks were staying all up and down these little streets that we crawl that runs through downtown, such as Walker Street, such as McKinney Street. McKinney was one of the busiest streets, and I will show you where blacks would stay. Uh, blacks would stay going south of McKinney, because going north, you're going downtown. And we're going to go through some of the popular places where blacks were staying at in Third Ward. This is the beginning of Third Ward, y'all. And Third Ward ran right there from Dowling Street all the way down to Scott Street. And on the other side of Scott was white people and Italians. And as we go down here, down McKinney here, all of this was blacks. All back up here, Nagel, all back up in there was blacks. All the way down to McGowan. And blacks was all up and down here. McKinney was a popular street because they used to have a place called Cato Fish Market on McKinney. Now we're going to turn down one of the streets and go down Polk Street, because Polk was also a very busy street. We're going to turn down Ennis. Everybody recognizes Ennis Street. We're going down Ennis, and we're going to go down Ennis to Polk Street. And the reason why we're going to go down Polk Street, because Polk Street was a real busy street. I-45. No, blacks were staying all back in here. And this is Polk Street, and Polk Street was a real busy street. And in fact, it was a business area for blacks back in the day. And we're talking about 1900s. As soon as blacks got, got started moving around and working after slavery, blacks started moving out here in the 1870s, but around 30 years later, 1900s, blacks was beginning to have uh, any of their own businesses, and most of their businesses was in beer joints and cafes right up in here on Polk Street. And blacks will stay all the way back up to Polk Street until you get to Scott Street, which is right up the street there. And uh, we're going to go back down Polk Street because Polk Street right up there is Scott. And on the other side of Scott Street was white people. But we're doing the, the, the history of Third Ward. All of this used to be part of Third Ward. All of this back up in here, which is Rose, is Robert Street. All the way back up into Dowling. And on the other side of Dowling was downtown, and which you knew that was downtown, or that's where most of your businesses and everything and people shop was on the other side of Dowling. But on this side of Dowling that we own was all blacks, all back in here on Palmer Street. Blacks were staying all back up in here on uh, in the history of Third Ward. All back up in here on Ennis. And uh, we go down up in here, and to show you how busy Polk Street was, up here on the corner of Polk and Darling, was the first newspaper here that comes to Houston, and that was the Houston Post. And uh, right up here on the corner of Polk Street and Darling. But right now you're on Polk and Delano. All of this was black staying all back up in here in Third Ward. This is the history of Third Ward that people don't even know that was part of Third Ward. Yes, sir. And on this corner right here is a famous corner of the Hobby family. The Hobby family is the people that, that they named Hobby Airport. He was our governor, William Hobby. And they bought the first newspaper here. Right there was the first newspaper, the Houston Post. And later on, they bought KPRC television station, Channel 2. But now, right now, we're going down Darling Street. And it used to be Dowling. Right now it's called Emancipation, but we call it Dowling, and that's what we're going to name it, Dowling. And uh, right there, going down here was nothing but blacks. And mainly people worked at the Houston Post. Hobby and them gave a lot of blacks a lot of jobs there at the Houston Post. And blacks were staying all back off in here on Bell and Dowling. All of this was black area and was part of Third Ward. Then, uh, in 1947, the state came through here with the first highway 
super highway we call it. And they knocked a lot of homes for blacks used to stay back up in here. A lot of blacks got had to move out of this area where you now we call it Interstate 45. But before 45 was here, it was black staying all back up in here. And we would go down and let you know and show you what the homes was and the houses were that black stayed out here and up until 1947 when they built the super highway that started right here on Dowling and went all the way in to Galveston. It's, but in 1916, they built Blackshire Elementary School and we would go by Blackshire Elementary School but and we would tell you the history of Dowling and how much Dowling meant to Third Ward. Third Ward without Dowling is like downtown without South Main. It didn't exist. It made Third Ward. Dowling Street made Third Ward because it was nothing but black businesses up and down Dowling Street. Holman Street made Third Ward because it was a black medical center out here in Third Ward. And I'll tell you why. But right now, we're going to Blackshire Elementary School. All right, this is the history of Third Ward. And right here on the corner of Holman and Delano. Right after World War I in 1915, ended in 1916, the Houston School District built the first school here in Third Ward. And that was in 1916. And that was Edward Blackshire. And Mr. Edward Blackshaw was the first principal of Prairie View University. Well, Prairie View College, during them days, they didn't have a president, so they had a principal at Prairie View. And we know it as Prairie View College. But back in the day, it was the, it was the next education after you left high school in 11th grade, you went to college. And the only college at that time was Prairie View. And Mr. Edward Blackshaw, was one of the first principal, because that's what they called him then. They didn't call him pre uh, president. He was the first principal for Prairie View College. And then later on, when they decided to get a president for the university, they elected Mr. Evan, Edward Evans to be the president. But right now, we're talking about Blackshaw. And Mr. Edward Blackshaw, they built this school right here, and this was the cutoff line. Blacks did not live on the other side of Alabama. This right here was the cutoff line in 1916. To let blacks on this side of Alabama was nothing but blacks and houses that was up in here. And it was for blacks to be able to go to the elementary school without going to Fourth Ward to Gregory. They got their own elementary school here in 1916 and it was Blackshire Elementary and 10 years later in 1926 remember everything was moving now because World War I had already ended and blacks was beginning to make a move after every war blacks made moves in Third Ward and after World War I in 1915 and 1916 a year later they built black their first school out here and that was elementary school of Blackshire. And 10 years later, 1926, right down the street from Blackshire, this was the busiest area for Third Ward, Holman. Holman and Elgin was the busiest section of Third Ward, going east and west. And right up in here in 1926, they built Third Ward, the first high school and it was called Jack Yates High School. And it opened up in February the 26th, 1926. And one year later, in 1927, we had our first black hospital. And it was called Negro General Hospital. And it was right down the street from the new Jack Yates, which was a year later, in 1927 was a good year for Third Ward. Because in 1927, we had our first black hospital and it was called the Negro General Hospital. And that's the original structure right there. They kept the original structure because the historical 
part of this hospital. And right there was Negro General Hospital. Right now you own the Elgin side. One side was on Elgin, which covered Jack Yates, and the other side was on Homer, which covered Blackshaw. The education of blacks here in Third Ward. This is real history, y'all. And as we go down here, we go down here to the, the front part of the Negro General Hospital. Every black that was born that wasn't out of a midwife had to be born right here at Negro General Hospital. That was the back part of Negro General Hospital. Now I will show you the front part of Negro General Hospital, which was right across the street from Blackshire. And right over there is the front part of Negro General Hospital, which was built in 1927 by blacks. And all up and down here was a medical center. You had doctor offices all up and down here on Homer. Not only did you have doctor's office, such as Dr. Banfield, uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Allen, uh, it had all Dr. Minor, Dr. Madison, all the doctors was up and down Holman Street. And they also had pharmacies where you could get your prescriptions. All up and down here was doctor's offices and businesses that was on Holman. As we turn here on Lavo, all of this covered one square block that Houston School District gave blacks to go to school, the high school, without going way over there to Colored High in Fourth Ward, which later on, the year of 1927, when they built the Negro General Hospital, it was, it was a good thing for all blacks because they also built a, a elementary school for blacks, the second elementary school for blacks, and it was called Douglas. But as we go down here and see the the first part of Jack Gates, 2610 Elgin is the original. And in 1927 is when they built this elementary school here, which was Douglas Elementary School. So in 1927 and Third Ward, they built a uh, first Negro General Hospital. And right there was Douglas, as we zoom in, was Douglas Elementary School, which was also built in 1927, 11 years after Blackshire. And later on, as blacks were staying all back off in here, and it wasn't no 45, so blacks stayed all back off in here well, well, I 45 years, all the way back on, on to the other side of Leland. And we will go show you where the other black elementary school was. And the reason why we showing you these elementary schools because this is where blacks got their education. It all started out with elementary schools. And they all winded up going to Jack Yates. All right, right over here was Dotson. And that, like I say, Dotson was the third black elementary school to be built out here in Third Ward for blacks. And all of this area was considered as Third Ward and blacks lived in all up in this area. And uh, houses and stuff was all up and down here. And it was all part of Third Ward. And it was all blacks back up in here, back in the 40s. It was the Tyler Barber College for men who wanted to cut hair and learn how to cut hair it was all up and down here on Dollar Street. And they all built around the Reverend Jack Gates and Mr. Richard uh, Vaughn to when they bought this property, this land up here on the corner of Elgin and Dowlin. They built the historical building there the El Dorado Ballroom, where nothing but your top entertainers would come, such as Bobby Bland, B.B. King, Fats Domino, whoever was a top black entertainer, including Duke Ellington, Ella Fitzgerald, they all knew about the El Dorado Ballroom. And that's how you, uh, they, they had the Franklin Beauty School, which for ladies who wanted to learn how to be a beautician, everything was about businesses down up in here. And right over there, right there, this building right there was
Franklin Beauty School, all on Darling Street. 